There's Tokyo Tower over there. This is just a really nice view of central Tokyo. Look at this. Oh, what's that? It's like someone's house with a massive swimming pool fountain. I hope not because I'd definitely be really jealous of that. Okay, about to head to the Shinkansen station. I'm going to Nagoya today. So right now I'm beginning a five-day food tour. This is actually in, in partnership and sponsored by food. So they're basically taking me to uh, four different very exclusive food tours and it starts in Nagoya today. I'm going to meet up with uh, with Ben spending the night in Nagoya and the food tour starts tomorrow. Of course, that's when the official food tour starts. But come on, we're food touring all the way. All the way there, all the way everywhere. And one of my favorite things ever about Japan is riding on a high-speed train and of course eating a bunch of bento box so that's what we're gonna do right now let's go my favorite bento store Ooh, wagyu box is always the best can't go wrong with this. So we'll do a little surf and turf. Beef and crab. Also, I literally just left my suitcase like outside of the store. Wouldn't do that in any other country. Japan, no biggie. This is another one of those boxes where it heats up on its own. This thing is heating up. All that steam is coming. Oh my gosh, it's burning hot right now. While we wait for this though, beef bento, karage wagyu. You really can't go wrong with any sort of wagyu bento. Just like the other ones, the flavor of the beef is really good. There's not that much. So a ton of rice, just a little bit of beef. Still good though. Got these like crazy alien looking squid dealies. Alright, I wouldn't say these are that good. It's like stuffed squid. So the outside kind of like tastes like squid jerky. And the inside is rice. Like sticky rice on the inside. It's kind of a little weird. Not the best. Whoa! Roasted crab legs in a bento box. This thing smells like the crab just was roasted over the fire. Great smoky aroma is coming from this box. Mm. This tastes better than some of those crab legs you'll find on those cheap Chinese buffets. It's not a lot of substance, so you get a few pieces of crab and there's little bits of crab on top, but the rice again is really a ton of it. Actually, the flavor of this rice is really, really good. It's not just plain rice. I think I season maybe a little bit of a seafood stock. They're really, really tasty. So even though there's not a ton of meat, rice is pretty delicious on its own. Just remarkable. Deliciously sweet, incredibly smoky. It just tastes like it just came off the grill. It's amazing how they're able to get that fragrance, that flavor into a bento box. That's why I love Japan. I forgot the best part. They have the crab innards, brain, and organs all here. And this is like natural seafood crab miso. Oh. This might be the best bento box I've ever had in Japan. Welcome to Matsuzaka, home of the most expensive beef in the world. It's gonna be a great day tomorrow. Matcha. So get off the train, we're in Taiki Town and uh, we're near Matsuzaka right now. This is a little farmhouse we're staying at tonight where we have like traditional matcha and then little welcome matcha and mochi, the double M's, the M and M's and traditional Japanese home. And the concept of this is called Ming Taiku. Where you can stay at these houses and you can also experience kind of like the agricultural side of traditional Japanese um, homes. But this is my first time staying in a traditional Japanese home. 
するんですよ。ああ、で、地元の郷土菓子。<笑><笑><笑> Ah, it's so lovely. Sweet and just refreshingly fragrant. A lot of people might sip this and feel like it's bitter. It's just so gratifying. <laughs> so, besides the do it yourself sushi, we have the skewers. Yeah, you see this a lot, like at local 7 Elevens. This is so cool. So, we got a, a bunch of stuff to choose from. And Yukiko here was actually a member of parliament in Japan, so. Uh, kind of a big honor to have her cook for us. I might have overstuffed this a bit. Some reason this just tastes so good, but because it was made like at someone's home, or I rolled it myself, my rolling skills are amazing. It's probably not it, but seriously, mm. so yummy. Dive into some of the oden, mm. fish cake. These little jelly noodles, no calories. I kid you not. One of my favorite things for a hot pot. Mm. Crunchy and scrumptious. Mmm. Miso soup. soup. Fresh vegetables from the farm, right outside this house, put into the miso soup. Tofu, seaweed, spring onions, potatoes, loaded miso. Such a rich Omari flavor of the miso. You put miso anything in front of me, miso wanna eat it. All right, we're gonna eat up. Uh, then we're gonna see our rooms, go to bed tomorrow. The most expensive beef in Japan, Matsuzaka. We're gonna see where it all came from. Welcome to my room. Good morning. After a great night, this lovely Airbnb. It's even more stunning in the daylight, right? There's like tea fields over there. It's like a bunch of uh, vegetables growing all around here. We're gonna come back to this place and have lunch, but right now, heading off to the famous Matsuzaka farm. Let's go. Okay, we're at the Matsuzaka farm. We're about to meet the owner. This is Tochiki san. <laughs> yes, I, I see. And there's the Matsuzaka cow right there. Oh, ohayo, ohayo, konnichiwa. Uh, Tochiki san, Mike. Uh, really nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. How old are you? 88. 88 years old? Whoa. Oh, looks so good. And that's a strong handshake there. Oh. <laughs> what? Because he ate the meat? Yeah, because he eats, eats the meat every day? Yeah. And this farm is literally where Matsuzaka beef originated. And Tochiki-san's entire life has been raising these cows. Mostly Matsuzaka, Matsuzaka uh -huh. beef is uh, female. Yes. 
and then they... Wait, is it mostly? Well, I thought they're all female. Oh, oh. All of them, yes, all yes. Of them. One thing is Matsuzaka beef is the reason why it's so expensive, it's so exclusive is because they're all virgin female and they believe to have the most tender of meats. And how many cows does he have on, on the farm? Only two. Yeah. So one of these cows will go for about $30,000. Yes, yes. He, like he only year. sold one. Yeah. At any time, he only has a few. Yeah, only, only a few cows on the farm. And you've been doing this since you were 15 years old? Yeah. Seventeen years old. That's a long learning. That's a long education. Okay, let's go. Huh? The cows. Uh, oh, slipper? slipper for the cows. Slipper for the cows. Wow. Yeah. Why? Why do cows need slippers? So it's to prevent the feet from damage. Damage? Yeah. <laughs> so imagine this is the hoof of the cow right here. And this is completely handmade from grass, dry grass. Oh, and this is how they walk yeah. through the field. I've heard of horseshoes. I never, I never yeah. heard of cow shoes before. Yeah, this is the cow I heard cow bell, not cow shoes. Oh, I got the answer. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm gonna go have some tea and talk a little cattle. This is actually really exciting because I, I've, I've always, of course, loved Wagyu. And I learned about Matsuzaka beef a couple years ago. And to be able to sit with a like legit living legend, you know, someone who's been doing this his whole life, just to be able to understand more about why this beef is the most expensive in Japan. Let me introduce you. This is Olivia. She's gonna be translating for us. First of all, it's it's a pleasure, Tochigi san, to meet you and to talk with you a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. And Matsuzaka tea is also very popular, very famous. And how did you go into this profession? He said that he really liked the cow since he was mm. little. Instead of having pet, he preferred to have cow instead. Uh -huh. Around this area, there's a like association who joined the farmer, mm -hmm. the butcher. From there, he started to you know like try to learn mm -hmm. how to raise. I see. Why do you think Matsuzaka beef is the most expensive and best beef in Japan? Wow. So before this area, they raised the cow only for working for the field. It's a worker cow mm -hmm. instead of for eating. Right. There's a very famous restaurant, mm -hmm. a sukiyaki restaurant mm -hmm. in Masusaka. Mm -hmm. So the lady mm -hmm. who operates the, the restaurant, because they have a different mm -hmm. meat, so she asked him to make the cow edible, mm -hmm. uh, like Yes. Soft, okay. Soft meat. Mm -hmm. That is the very start of the Matsaka. So, Sachiki san was really the founding, almost the founding father for Matsuzaka beef. Uh, uh, before uh, his ancestor. Oh, ancestor. Yeah, ancestor. Uh, it's Me Meiji period. Meiji, Meiji period. period. Oh, Meiji yeah. period. Okay. And what did, what did he just write? This is the letter from the, the lady who operated the, the restaurant. Oh, wow. How old is the letter? Meiji From Meiji period? Oh my god, really? Basically, uh, what Tsuchika-san is uh, saying is that 
uh, his ancestors literally got a request. And this is the actual letter from the restaurant during the Meiji period where the restaurant owner asked his ancestors to give them a cow that's like tender so they can serve it in the restaurant. This is amazing. This is like beef history right here. They don't sell the meat from other, uh, to other place, only mm -hmm. for this restaurant. Only for this one restaurant. Yeah. And so this letter is over 100 years old. Yeah. How did you or your ancestor figure out how to create the process of raising Matsuzaka beef, you know, feeding it the best foods and rubbing it with wine and giving it beer? How did they learn how to do all that or how did they invent that? Mm -hmm. So they, they, they process the food for the cow instead mm -hmm. of giving raw food. Oh, okay, okay. You're actually making the food, not just like, here, go graze around. Yeah. Here's a carefully prepared meal for you. He said that if you feed the, the cow with the raw grass, yes. the, the fat, mm -hmm. it's getting yellow. Oh, really? The color changed. Is that still the case today? Do you still cook? And make the feed for the cows. <laughs> no, no more cooking for you, cows. There's a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, stories about how Japanese wagyu is fed beer, it's massaged. Is that is that real? Massage is in restaurant, they, they serve beer to the customer. And then if the customer is not finishing the beer, they give that unfinished drink mm -hmm. to the cow. T to the cow. They don't want to waste. Yes. After they, they, they give the, the beer to the cow, it becomes they, addicted. They result in beer. He thinks like if you, if you, if you give the beer to the, the cow, uh -huh. the cow will like have more appetite. Oh, okay. And then for the massage, he said that if you give massage to the to the cow, mm -hmm. it's gonna help to how to say circulate circulation, circulation is better. Yeah. Okay. And this is a misconception that a Japanese cow because it's fattier is not healthier for you to eat. But that's not true, right? You have to make um, the beef mm -hmm. that can be melted in human body in human body temperature. So, so literally, it's just melting your mouth. Yes. And the classic way of cooking wagyu or uh, matsuzaka is sukiyaki, right? Why is sukiyaki so good for? Uh, if you do the meat in yakiniku way, mm -hmm. you cannot tell the original taste of Really? The because you have to eat with the sauce, right? Uh -huh. And he said, but if you cook in sukiyaki way, mm -hmm. uh, the fat is melt, mm -hmm. and then you can taste the real meat. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Like yakiniku, you do get a diff, like it's just mel melty fat. So sukiyaki, it melts the fat already. You get the and actual taste the of the beef. Yes. That makes a lot of sense. All right, so here's what I found out. This is kind of a revelation for me and maybe for you guys as well that want to actually taste real Matsuzaka beef. If you want the best Matsuzaka beef, it can only be found in Matsuzaka because there's so, so few of them. They can't be shipped anywhere else. So what I ate in Tokyo, the Matsuzaka beef was the younger cow, younger cows, 30 months. So they haven't really got the best, the best flavor. So if you want the actual best, best of the beef, this is where you go. A little more information. If, if you guys are coming here to Matsuzaka, Tokusan is the, is the term that's used to describe Tokusan, the original best quality cows here in Matsuzaka, and we're eating that today. This is the Tokusan mark. Look for this if you want the best quality. The 40 month cow or older, that is the best quality Matsuzaka beef you can have. Thank you so much because this has been like, I, I, I thought I knew stuff about Wagyu or Matsuzaka. I did my research and I ate so much of it last time I was in Tokyo, I really knew nothing. But thank you, arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you so much.
And this environment is so great. Like there's a tea garden in the back and just great farmlands and hills everywhere. No wonder the best cows are grown right here. I mean, even the surrounding is so serene and peaceful. And obviously they are adorable and so it's kind of sad, but they are given a really good and loving life here. Gotta go and uh, we're actually gonna go taste the authentic Matsuzaka beef now, sukiyaki style. But seriously, if I could be 88 and look and feel as good as this gentleman right here, you're pretty lucky. Maybe the secret is in the beef. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I will, I'll take the basket, for sure. Put me to work. Oh, I gotta work, I gotta eat. I mean, if I don't work, I don't eat. I gotta work up an appetite. I'm going with uh, Tsukiji san We're gonna go harvest some shiitake mushrooms, and then we're gonna start cooking the beef. We would have more uh, shiitake mushrooms this time, but monkeys came. How did the monkeys get in? Oh, just a little, just a little, little space. space they, they just get in. Oh, wow. Small monkeys. Well, maybe it's a trim, but I'm also a monkey and I'm taking the mushrooms. Okay, so check it out. These are the shiitake mushrooms. <laughs> oh, I was surprised I'm doing something wrong here. Oh, at least they didn't take this. At least the monkeys weren't so greedy or... Yeah, where they're so full already. All right, I think that's everything the monkeys left us. Not even a full basket, not even half a basket. He said if the, if the monkey is not um, yeah. taking all the, uh, the, the mushroom. It's a whole basket. Three. Three baskets? Three basket. The monkey took two and 90% of a basket. <laughs> yes. Hey. <laughs> Bad monkey. Harvest my own cabbage. Ah. Oh. Oh. That felt really cool. Sukiyaki. Okay. I mean, that was easy. Hard work's done already by him. I just gotta pull it out of the ground. Fresh spring onions. Ah, oh, yeah. Let's go. And since the monkey stole the other vegetables, this monkey to help carry some to the table. All right, we're sitting down for the classic sukiyaki meal, and this is our Masazaka beef. Of course, it's got this red logo, Mount Fuji and the sun, and this is when you know that this is the localized highest quality of Matsuzaka beef, the Tokosan, this logo right here. That's what you look for when you're in this region. Of course, we got the thinly sliced version for the sukiyaki. And right before that, the mushrooms we picked, just a little bit of fire, a little bit of soy sauce. Itadakimasu. Oi, shi, dash. Something so simple. Mm. I mean, it's so flavorful, so glad the monkey did not get this one. This is like laid out perfectly. Little side dishes, egg, and the classic way you eat sukiyaki is the sukiyaki sauce is really just some soy sauce and some sugar, and then you dip it in the egg, and that's it. So it retains a lot of that great beef flavor. And after learning all the stuff I learned today about Matsuzaka beef and Wagyu in general, I feel like I'm gonna experience everything again for the first time. I'm passing on precious cargo. <laughs> <laughs> To Kiko sign here. Open. Open. Wagyu. This is worth more than people's jewelry right now. Like, this is a good pound or so. A pound of Matsuzaka will go for about 500 US dollars. Ooh. And you can see here, this is really cool. They put a piece of fat here just in case you're barbecuing it. Instead of butter, you're gonna use Matsuzaka beef fat. The pattern, like fine art, that's what makes good Japanese Wagyu what it is. Like, it just looks like it should be hung in a museum. So while you go send it's doing the buttering and the fat, all the fun stuff, I'm gonna start uh, putting the, cracking the egg into the bowl. 
Okay, so apparently to make really good sukiyaki, you've got to cook everything on the pan first, the ingredients. Oh, first piece of Matsuzaka beef is going in. And we're just stir frying all this together. The otake sauce, like I said, it's just sweet soy. It's usually what's inside a sukiyaki sauce. So the vegetables and the meat is cooked first on the hot pot. And you're gonna see a little bit of caramelization from the sugar and that smell, it's just getting to be pretty darn incredible. And then you're gonna dip it in the egg. And this is done for a couple of different reasons. And one of the reasons is that um, the flavor of the egg is gonna offset the, the sweetness of the sauce a little bit. And the second is that it's gonna cool down the ingredients that just came from the hot pot. It's for me? Oh, arigato gozaimasu. Look at this. The Matsuzaka beef, all that great marbling, that beautiful pattern is still visible after it's cooked. I just learned today we do the sukiyaki because a lot of the fat does render, so it leaves more of the beefy flavor. And for those of you guys who are not familiar with Wagyu, there are different types of Wagyu. And of course, probably the most popular one is Kobe, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. It just has the best marketing department. Good Wagyu, it's, it's greatest. So there's A1 through five, and this is obviously A5. Even five has an index rating of between eight to 12. And 12, of course, is the best. Prime, which is the best cut of beef in the US, has about 6% fat. This thing, minimum 25%. Every time I have top quality Wagyu, the sensation just clobbers me. It's like that first time you were ever kissed were the first time you ever seen the sun setting into the ocean, like that kind of sensation. It's just unbelievably melty as soon as it touches your lips, the dissolving process begins. And by the time you're chewing it for like the fourth time. Mm. And they're so right about the sukiyaki cooking method. It's a little sweeter, but you get much better sensation, much better flavor from the actual beef. And that flavor is so incredibly strong. It doesn't just melt, but that incredible beef flavor just completely dominates your taste buds. When people often ask me, what is the best food I've ever had in my world. I consistently say Japanese Wagyu, top quality Japanese Wagyu. All right, we're eating some of this and then we're gonna eat some with rice. Oh, steamed eggs with little bits of shrimp and seafood inside. Oh my God, oishi. Oh wow, that is amazing. Melting your mouth eggs, a little bit of fish cake. I thought the beef was gonna be the sole star of the show today, but hmm, heck yeah. By the way, this is so kawaii. I wanna hug it when I go to bed. Freshly cooked rice from an actual stove. Now we got a bunch of vegetables. We got a pot full of Matsuzaka beef grease. Let's eat. <laughs> All right, got my full plate. Got a refill button on my sukiyaki. More mazuzaka beef. What's so amazing about the experience, again, besides the flavor. And also like what I love about Japanese food is you feast with your eyes, your nose, and then it goes in your mouth. And by that time, it's just the anticipation is just insane. I pulled this from the ground. I got to taste it. Mm. Everything, it's just culinary perfection. Simple stuff. It's just a great flavor of the fresh quality experience. But on top of that, it's just this incredible experience of learning all about Matsuzaka beef. And again, I thought I knew a lot about Wagyu beef already, but really I learned so much from Tochigi-san this morning. So much about this beef and how the cows are raised and how they get drunk off beer, then go on a eating bender, then coming here and having Yukiko-san cook me the perfect sukiyaki, and then going vegetable picking with Itsuo-san. And this is actually rice that he grew right here on this farm. Just all that combined with how amazingly delicious every single part of this meal is. But going into like the local region, where a very specific food is from and having it made by the people there and just being able to experience all this, that is priceless. I mean, there's a price to it, but 
the experience, really. You're gonna remember that for a long, long time. And of course, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'm here on invitation by Buy Food, which is a company that it's just all about food experiences in Japan. So they do cooking classes, they do food tours, experiences like this. So a lot of great stuff. If you love to eat, and I know you do, otherwise you probably wouldn't be watching this channel. Or you could be watching because you like me. Yeah, I know, I know you're just here for the food. But they do all these great things. And also what they do from every single booking, they donate to causes supporting children all around the world. And so far they raised about 7 million yen to fund this charitable cause. So that's really awesome. But check them out, anything you need for booking, for experiences, food related tours around Japan, they're the ones to go to. That information is available for you down below. Again, this is like one of the greatest experiences I had in Japan so far. Learning so much i ate with my mind and with my mouth today all right guys thank you all so much for watching i got more sukiyaki to get to until we eat again see you later let's see how ben likes his first taste of matsuzaka beef this is chelsea ben's girlfriend <laughs> oh my god it is amazing oh my god it's the best in my life. Mike's described, I know it's good, but it's surprisingly good. You need to come here to have a try. These are not paid actors. The testimony they give is their own. Well, Ben's paid, but Chelsea's not. So, there you go.